The midterm election is less than two months away and you're probably seeing campaign ads ramping up on TV and online. Republicans are hoping to have a strong showing on local and national levels. However, Denver 7's Megan Lopez shows us why that might not be the result here in Colorado. Historically, midterm elections have been seen as an evaluation of the party in power. That's why for so many months we've heard about a potential red wave coming this November. But a new 538 forecast shows that red wave might be more of a ripple in Colorado, at least in some of the state's biggest races. 538's 2022 midterm election forecast gives incumbent Senator Michael Bennett about a 9 in 10 chance of beating his Republican opponent. Joe O'Day. 538's Alex Samuels says the forecasting shows that between his lofty fundraising advantage and the power of the incumbency, Bennett is clearly favored to win. For Democratic strategist Steve Welcher, this is partially to do with national politics. Because Republicans are playing defense in so many other states around the country, it's harder for Republicans to consolidate money and play offense against Bennett here in Colorado. But even with a favorable forecast, that's not to say the race is over. National Republicans are really pouncing on this race as well. They see O'Day as a good candidate for Colorado. Republican strategist Laura Carno says Bennett is tied to President Biden's policies and Senator Bennett hasn't done much. While he's been in um, in the U.S. Senate, there isn't big landmark legislation. Um, and so a lot of people are looking at, well, is there an alternative? The other major election, 538, has forecast in favor of Democrats, the governor's race. The odds for Jared Polis beating Heidi Ganahl are much higher in this forecast. I think the governor's race is all but over. For Welchert, it's about Republican missteps. The Ganahl campaign hasn't been well run. I mean, she's had a number of missteps, a number of misstatements, and, and um, I think that's been, been tough for her moving forward. But Carno says this race could be all about the money. Jared Polis showed last time, uh, four years ago, that he's willing to write a $25 million check to buy all of the ads. And for voters, she says the question that could sway this race is simple. What has gone on in the last four years in Colorado that's made it uh, arguably a worse state. For now, for these two races, the forecast is looking good for the Democrats, but polling has been wrong in the past. So what really matters is what happens between now and Election Day. Megan Lopez, Denver 7. And Senator Bennett did not win his previous two Senate races in landslides. Digging deeper into the data for you tonight, in neither 2010 or 16, Bennett surpassed, did not surpass that 50% threshold. In 2010, Bennett beat Ken Buck by 30,000 votes, winning 48% of the votes statewide. Now, in 2016, Bennett was reelected by a wider margin this time, more than 150,000 votes. Bennett received 50% of the vote then. And let's dig into some of the other races now. Political experts say those running for the state attorney general's office, secretary of state and treasurer could go unnoticed. And I think that, that those um, those races as a group stand a better chance of, of going Republican, I think, um, because they're, you're not going to see as many um, ads on TV, probably. Um, and so when you look at punishing the party in power, if, if people do that as they've done very frequently in, in previous elections, um, they might look at those and say, it doesn't matter. I think it does matter. Well, the experts we spoke to say Colorado Senate race will be the one to watch. They don't expect the races in our state house to change.